I've carried this theme of not ever feeling good enough, like, and afraid to use my voice, like wanting to just sit in the background, not ever draw attention to myself, but always feeling like I could do better and be better. And like, whatever I did, it wasn't enough. It wasn't mine. This wasn't my energy that I was holding on to. That it came from the women in my family, those who suffered religious persecution, those who were in abusive relationships and kept small to stay safe, those who had to flee their homes, those women who were like me and had these spiritual abilities and helped people. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Charmed Life podcast. I am your host. My name is Trisha Carr. And this podcast is all about spirituality, magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love frequency that exists both in nature and in the cosmos, and how we can embody and integrate and live a life that is magnetically pulled to and through with this frequency of unconditional love. That's my intention for this episode and all of them and for the whole podcast feed and YouTube channel. I hope you'll join me in both of those places, whatever calls to you and anything that calls to you in the way of anything you're interested in learning. Well, I'm open to hearing that too. And you can post that as a comment on a YouTube video or you can email it to me by going to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and find that contact tab, and you'll find a way to be able to send a message directly to me or my assistant. And just so you know, my uh, assistant tends to those things that come through the contact form to make sure that I answer them in a timely manner. And with that, let me get to this particular episode with my heart so filled with gratitude for your being here. And I also open myself up to the frequency of that magnetic hope that this will serve you in some way. And this episode is featuring a wonderful friend and colleague. Her name is Amy Crandall. She is an intuitive, a channel, a medium, an empath, and a Reiki practitioner. I've worked with Amy in a few programs. She uh, mentions in the, uh, the, along the, the lines of her telling her story that she was in the 2019 Intuitive Intensive. And to contextualize that for you, if you haven't heard about it, the Intuitive Intensive is a immersive, an immersive education and group coaching program. It's 12 weeks, weeks long. We do it once per year. And it's led and taught by myself and my best friend and business partner, Crystal Ann Compton. Crystal is a spiritual channel, uh, a spiritual teacher and an intuitive channel. And she's the founder of the Lightworkers Lab. Amy also mentions that, or we mention it in the, in the episode here in a moment in our conversation. And the Lightworkers Lab, you can find a link for it down in the description. It's an online spiritual community. It's hosted on Facebook. It is so much more than a Facebook group. It is a place to come together, to grow, to uh, find all these free resources for spiritual development. People are constantly, free, every single day, a few times a day, there are people who are um, these practitioners in spiritual modalities who have been, you know, aligned with our, we've aligned our hearts in a certain way that we are teaching love and we're teaching personal development of your spirituality. And so we have practitioners going up who are serving, teaching, giving intuitive readings right there from people commenting on the feed. It's an amazing place. It's really a beautiful intentional community and it has impacted my life in ways that I can't even fathom or measure or imagine. It's been so amazing and um, that's how Crystal and I met, actually. And now we have all these programs that we run together. And the Intuitive Intensive is like our flagship program. And so Amy was in this program, and she explains some of her experience. And the reason I want to contextualize that for you is because we don't really dig into it in our conversation, but also the Intuitive Intensive registration is open now. We have our next one coming up in about uh, four weeks. Yeah, it starts January 18th. So 
you'll hear a little um, sharing of some of those experiences later on in this episode. And you can go scroll down and look at the show notes, the description, and find the link so you can go and read all about the curriculum, this how we actually run it. I invite you to check that out and join us if it calls to you. And I thank you for being here, for answering the call to be here together, because your light, your contribution, your questions, your offering of your heart energy is a part of this. That's how energy works. So without further delay, I welcome you to this beautiful conversation, this wonderful energy, this field and this container, sacred space of the conversation that I have with Amy Crandall. Welcome to the show, Amy Crandall. I have been intending to have you on for the longest time. You're just so beautiful. Like your your energy is so beautiful. It flows in such a powerful, gentle, beautiful way. Like just a for me, it's like the powerful divine feminine. You got some, you got, you know, you got the divine masculine as well, of course. But you know, the way that your energy and the way you hold space and the way you heal and attune. My goodness. I just love being around you. So I've been intending to have you on for a long time. And so thank you so much for being on today. Way to start off getting me right in my feels, right in my <laughs> your, heart. Hey, your feels I, are big, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's an easy target. <laughs> it is. You know, I set myself up for it every time, too. So. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me here. I was so excited when I got the invitation. I just... It's truly an honor to be here. I've loved having you as a teacher, as a mentor, watching all of these episodes. It truly is an honor to be here. Oh, well, thank you. Well, let's let's get everyone into your work, your light, your energy. And so just share with everyone your journey, um, your work, wherever you want to start. Let everyone know about you. Well, it's interesting as... The further I get in my journey, my awakening, my spiritual experience, I realize that I've had these things happening to me my whole life. I just mm -hmm. didn't have the vocabulary mm -hmm. to name what was going on, but it truly opened up for me when my dad, um, it's almost his anniversary of his passing. So now it's going to get me even more emotional, but he mm -hmm. passed away almost five years ago, at the end of December. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what ignited this journey, I think mostly because I wanted to hear from him and he was that safe, safe person to be able to connect to in spirit. You know, I knew I could trust what he would bring me. I knew that he had that ability to come talk to me in my dreams and that felt safe to me. Whereas before I was always fascinated by the world of spirit. I always felt called to it. I watched every show. I read every book I could find but I always kept it as an arm's like at an arm's length because growing up, I was always told, be careful of what you let in. Like you don't know what you're going to invite in when you open yourself up to the world of spirit. And that having my dad as that safe person truly is what switched everything on for me. And at first I thought I was going crazy, you know, because you could hear things and see things and not have names for them. But then I found Crystal and Compton and the Lightworkers Lab and the intuitive intensive that I took in 2019. That's really, honestly, wholeheartedly what put all of the puzzle pieces together for me to be able to fully embrace these abilities within me and truly be able to connect them in a way that I could help other people. And for that, I'm forever thankful. Mm. Wow. I can't believe just 2019. It feels like I've known you longer. <laughs> I would, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the best of ways though, in the best of yes. ways, like it just, some people you meet and you feel that, that soul connection and you feel mm -hmm. like you've known them for much longer than you've had that physical experience with them. So mm -hmm. I agree. But yes. And we've only met in person one time too. That's what's amazing about the soul mm -hmm. connection is that you can have these, well, also modern times, you know, we have these really 
um, real relationships, truly, you know, significant relationships. Um, and you, you know, we don't even have to live near one another. So it opens up the whole globe to us, which is really cool. And of course, you have opened up the whole uh, of the universe, mm -hmm. but because you needed to, you needed to speak with your father. And that is, that's a common, it's a, it's a common, um, way that we kind of open up metaphysically or spiritually to be able to open up those aspects of ourselves. It was actually for me as well. And it wasn't even my loved one, technically speaking. It was my best friend's mother-in-law who passed. And I didn't even know she passed at first because my best friend, it was like her mother and she just kind of like imploded and didn't, you know, it, it was kind of typical to not talk for a few weeks anyway. So mm -hmm. she didn't even, she couldn't even bring herself to speak about it or tell me about it. But I was going through these, it was like the, you know, those cords, those Aka cords. And when a piece of you, especially when it's parent, I think, and, and when a piece of you is no longer being physically expressed here, because your father is a piece of you and you are a piece of him, your energy, your soul is now anchored, a different part of it is like completely anchored there in spirit. And it's just like, it's almost like you have no option, right? You have no option but to need to have that connection or reform it, let it be its new way, even though that's painful. And that's that process of grief. Five years isn't it, that long. Yeah. It's not. But what's really coming to me as we're talking about this is also being able to open up that connection. First off has blessed me immensely. I mean, obviously being able to do the work that we do, being able to bring that peace and love and healing to other people, myself, <clears throat> excuse me, it's given me a deeper connection with my dad that I can work with him on a in a way I wasn't able to in this physical lifetime. We, we had a really great relationship, but it just, the work we're able to do together now is so profound and being able to also be that mouthpiece for other members in my family that also miss him and miss that experience of him. Like that's truly a blessing that I'm so grateful for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's transcendence and that's what is so awesome. And all of the, all of the nuances of what the word awesome can mean, but not just necessarily that that's positive. It's awesome about the, our physical passing, it's, it is transcendence. And so all of who it is that he is continues and then some and more. And I, I, my father passed in 2016 and our relationship was really, you know, we didn't have much of a relationship for uh, 30, about 30 years of the last 30 years of my life, but the same thing, like the work that I can do with him now and actually was just working with him last week, probably because we were going to enter in this, <laughs> in this conversation and there was a lot of father energy coming into my field. But uh, yeah, he was, we were really working together in a really beautiful way that we, we had absolutely no opportunity to do while he was alive because he was very ill. He, alcoholism and, and mm. terrible rage. He just had terrible spiritual sickness and abuse his whole life, both that he received and then inflicted and... So now, like, we're free of that. He's had a lot of opportunity to heal it and to no longer be bound by those chains of pain, even though I'm, I guess he's probably still doing the work in his, in his transcendent part of his journey now. And it's just, it can provide so much healing. Do you, do you find yourself working, attracting people who need to do some healing around uh, deaths of loved ones or just healing around relationships in, in these significant ways? You know, I hadn't actually ever thought of it quite like that, but now that you asked that, I do. I have my own spiritual business, but I also still work um, for a school. And it's often I find myself in the middle of reading, sitting at my desk with my coworkers who just lost loved ones, especially this year where grief and loss look a little different in 2020 and we're not able to fully hold that space that we normally would that physical space yeah. with our loved ones i found that it has been a theme for people not able to process that death or 
I have such chills, <laughs> even mm-hmm. those final moments, like where they've held on to guilt or they've reviewed the relationship and they wish that there were things that they could have said or done differently. And it's, what's interesting is a lot of that comes through and love heals it. Love, mm-hmm. ooh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love takes it away almost instantaneously, you know, because when we pass, all that's left is love. Mm -hmm. All that's left is that soul connection, that bond, and it doesn't ever go away. And helping people to remember that, to feel that, to embrace that connection, it's it's an amazing thing to witness, to watch that heaviness of grief shift to a light in their eyes of the remembrance of that relationship has just transformed. It hasn't ended. What I think is so beautiful too, is that it's like, whereas when we are living and and we're incarnated together, we have this orientation about the relationship and relating to someone else to their physical body. I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. You know, you came into the world in physical form, and that's when your father fell in love with you. And that's when the bond began. That's the beginning point. It's perfectly beautiful, honestly, about the human experience. It's really lovely that we can kind of bring so much meaning into being physical. It's so, I really do cherish it. It's it's being a manifestation of Gaia, a bit of this earth, and I think that's wonderful. And yet... It's so, it, it, it is a transcendence. It transcends the physical experience as, you know, <laughs> is the theme, I guess, and how I'm feeling what you're feeling. And so then we do the physical thing and then one of us moves on before the, the other a lot of times, you know, and the transcendent part of it, that that bigger part has to continue. And the way for the person who survives, who's still in the physical body, the way for them to continue their relationship is to switch the orientation from the physical to the heart. Like that's how you find your loved one. You have to go into your heart. Mm-hmm. And that's like so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And that's the part, that's the transition that's that the, where the grief is, you know, moving it from the physical, even though it was in the heart anyway, but like mm-hmm. just removing that piece and making it all the subtlety of your heart. Don't get you what? <laughs> I was like, don't get me wrong. I would give anything for that big giant bear hug. My dad was a very large man who's six, five mm-hmm. built like a linebacker. Like I would give anything for one of those, yeah. one of those hugs, but that relationship we've developed since he's passed, I yeah wholeheartedly cherish right and that's that's something i had to sort of and i still am i guess say it's okay that i love still for those who have passed love their physical presence as well i love it still and that's the thing we'll always miss i love that part of the relationship and so i think sometimes the tendency is when we are opening up spiritually or metaphysically we think, well, that it doesn't really matter, or at least that maybe that scans our consciousness sometimes. And I think that's a way to maybe bypass some of the things that could be grief or pain. But that's not true. The fact is that the physical experience is so beautiful and so important and valid. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's a part of the survivor. Hey, everyone, it's that time of year again. Time for the Intuitive Intensive. The Intuitive Intensive is a 12-week immersive educational and group coaching program designed to blast open your psychic intuitive abilities. There's no going back. I can't unsee all the things that I've seen. I can't unfeel all the things that I've felt. It's, it's, it's been life-changing, not just because of everything that I've learned, but everything that I've experienced. I am always so afraid of being seen. That's something that makes me want to hide. But this is just making me want to come out. Class begins January 18th, 2021. Registration is open now and all levels of development are welcome. Serious students only. This program is taught by myself, Trisha Carr, and Crystal Ann Compton. Find the link to read more and register in the description below. We hope to see you in class.
I know you love to work in a couple of areas and you love to work in ancestry. It's interesting. It's been coming up so much. I had Amanda Ray on, who, of course, you know, and that came up in our conversation that was a couple of podcasts ago. It's just been coming up so much. I think it's the time that we're in. You also work with Gaia and healing spaces. And I think those things are very much linked because, again, the ancestry, that is that is what is encoded is one of the things that is encoded, recorded in the crystalline grid, which is Gaia's basically like the Akashic record of Gaia. And so it is the living on this planet and about this planet. And so, so far as humans is concerned, humans are concerned, that is the ancestry. So talk about some of your work around that if you, wherever you wanna talk. Yeah. Well, the, one of the most profound things that has come through in my own ancestral healing journey is there was this moment just a couple of months ago, like I have carried this and I've just recently written about it, but I've carried this theme of not ever feeling good enough, Mm -hmm. like, and afraid to use my voice, like wanting to just sit in the background, not ever draw attention to myself, but always feeling like I could do better and be better. And like, whatever I did, it wasn't enough. And I've had this with me my whole life. And I attended a workshop, I want to say it was probably about October and what came through with it, I'm going to trip over my words, but what came through with it, it was, it wasn't mine. This wasn't my energy that I was holding onto. It came from, it has Mm -hmm. such a tender spot, giant empath, get emotional, but Mm -hmm. what came through that it came from the women in my family. Yeah. Those who suffered religious persecution, those who were in abusive relationships and kept small to stay safe, those who had to flee their homes, um, those women who were like me and had these spiritual abilities and helped people and helped to heal people and were later persecuted for those things. Those, that was the energy that I was carrying. Though It all came from those who came before me when I could realize that it wasn't mine, I could honor, I could honor it in those who came before me. Mm-hmm. I could hold that space to allow them to be seen in ways that they didn't feel free to express themselves. Um, I actually held, it was did meditation, a healing circle, if you will, where a circle of women larger than I could fathom all lined up to come and be seen and be witnessed and be heard, lined up ready to let go of what kept them small, let go of what they were ready to be healed. And what I saw in that moment was it not only healed it in them, but it healed it for me and for my daughter And my granddaughter, who's about to be born in February, like that to me is the importance of ancestral healing of ancestral work, because they don't have to carry it anymore. That's really what's led into also being called to work with the energy of spaces. Because I don't think we realize that we're also affected by the energy that different places and spaces and energies of the earth, those have an effect on our physical spiritual being as well. So I think they kind of go, in my experience, they go hand in hand with each other. Uh, what was interesting is we're building a pool in our backyard. Mm-hmm. And shortly after this ancestral healing took place, I was called to do some energy work in the pool. Like right now, it's just a giant hole in the ground, but I was called to do some work there. And what was interesting is what came through when I was channeling the energy of Gaia was to heal the space of it through all time and dimensions that have taken place here. And that to me was really profound. Like whatever energy was being held there to release any trauma or anything that was no longer serving. And that 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 space was actually going to be a pool of healing waters (laughs) and that people would be drawn to it and not know why. Mm. And I thought that was amazing. To me, I built it 
it was being built selfishly because I love salt water. I love salt water baths. Those are my my biggest self-care item. And I'm really tall. So it's only part of me that can fit in the bath at one time. <laughs> so I joke that it's my outdoor saltwater bath. <laughs> but what's really taking place is something that's much more profound. And I am grateful to be able to be a part of that work and to assist in those things that are being called to be healed. Mm. Beautiful. That And like I said, I see that connection too with with the ancestral heal well so when you're healing something in yourself you find that you found that you were carrying some pain and burdens that didn't happen in your specific incarnation and it was from your the women of your family and the thing is it, it there is cellular memory well there's memory in every kind of energy and everything is energy and so in the cells that we pass from one to another and we cross pollinate through our bloodlines and you know, these bloodlines are meaningful. And then just love lines, you know, between you and me, that's meaningful as well. And so what's really interesting about the bloodlines, though, is that you could have not even known the person you'd never met on this earth. And there's meaning there because of the energetic memory of the of the blood of the cells that are being mm -hmm. spread throughout this genealogy. And so that's why, I mean, it can go in all directions. You are being called by the memory in your energy cells, or the cells, to hold space for them and to help have compassion and love them through it. And then you can, you heal that in yourself and then you don't pass that along to your children and grandchildren or, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. And that is what, like, so I say, see the Gaia connection because you're healing Gaia. You are her expression. You are the earth manifest by the love of source, by the love of God. And that marriage of divine father and divine parent is you and is your aunt and is your mother and your grandchildren and your children. And so it's, it, it, then I just see you talking about this salt water, which is the marriage of emotion and earth. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> you see, you see like, you, you just are that, that you, again, like I said, you have this divine feminine frequency in in the greatest power. And that's just where we are. That's why the ancestral healing is coming up so much, because it is such a feminine frequency, I think, ancestral mm -hmm. healing. Um, or it's the divine feminine who is manning that, manning, manning, <laughs> so to speak, managing, let's say that, leading that now. And that's why it's so important. There's so much going on. There's so much healing happening, which is when there's healing, basically there is dematerialization of something that is no longer serving us. But when something is dematerializing or dying, there's like a death kick. There's a death rattle. There's a fight. And I think that's why there's so much unrest right now and why it's mm -hmm. showing up in so many ways. It's actually, it's, um, you know, when you have a bad wound and you're getting close to it, you're you're crossing that peak into the healing stage. You know, it's like wound and then it's going to start healing. It's almost, it's like the most sore at that time. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. after a certain amount of days or weeks, however bad the wound is, it actually gets a little more sore as it's peaking over to that healing side. And that's, that's just patterning, right? That's paradigm getting louder to say, this is, it's time to heal this. You know, it's interesting as you say that, I think the reason that this, this thing in specific was coming up because I was ready to let it go within myself. Yeah. Like I had fought against it and like wanted, you know, all of the work that I had done to try and heal that for myself. Like I was ready to let it go and didn't quite know how to do that. And that's when the true source was made evident to me. Mm. And I think it's, I think truly when it comes to ancestral healing, and this is just my limited experience with it is that it is waiting for somebody in your ancestry to do the work to say to say no more mm -hmm. yeah and that's uh that's a a, a a wonderful you know it's a great and and beautiful and responsible position but it's so humbling too there's there's nothing 
arrogant about it. It's actually the quite the opposite to be able to do that. I have to point out, though, too, you know, like your experience with building your saltwater pool and how you, you know, energetically connected with it, dealt with it, you know what I mean, and programmed it to be a healing space. It reminds me of, I don't know if you have heard of this, but in Iceland, and I don't know how widespread this is, but I think it is pretty widespread. When they're, when in Iceland, when they're going to build something new, they, they speak with the devas. They speak with the fairies and the deva folk, and they actually bring in, <laughs> they tend to bring in an intuitive or a medium or something, someone who, you know, a spiritual practitioner to speak with them and ask their permission and negotiate with them and to ex explain their intentions and to pay their respects before they actually begin the project. And so that's what, <laughs> that's what, that's what you did. <laughs> I laugh. I laugh because I've actually been energetically involved since the beginning of this project. You know, I came home one day from work and they had, uh, they had to grade the land. So it removed all of the existing plants and trees except for our one lone lemon tree. And I looked at it and this is when I really realized how connected I was to that space because I felt such sorrow. Like I felt such sadness and was actually called to begin that healing work before I went out there and sat on a blanket, had my crystals and some essential oils with me. And just, I was told to lay there and just listen and just observe and be still. And I could feel the energies of the devas, the fairies. There's a gnome in, in my backyard <laughs> mm -hmm. that works with the, um, that works with the lemon tree. Uh, but I was called to do some healing because I was told that that lemon tree was actually mourning the loss of his friends. <laughs> yeah. He was mourning the loss of his friends and just to heal that energy first. And then as the hole was dug, to heal, it made me feel almost guilty because it almost felt like a trauma that took place as like, as the hole was being dug. So to heal the trauma of that, but was guided to put some Reiki symbols in the pool. I actually blessed it with some essential oils. And there is currently a crystal point buried in the middle of it. So it amplifies all of that healing energy. So it'll be interesting for me to see what work what healing work or what energy work will be continued to be called of me as that project progresses. But it did start just like I said, before any work was done, I was called to go manage the energy up there to help bring it back to that loving state. Mm -hmm. And the intention is, I mean, it's everything, but again, it, it doesn't mean there won't be mourning and there won't be the the feeling of transition from well when something dematerializing like there uh -huh. is a, a a powerfully slow energy force slowing down that you know we feel as beings who are you know creating the positive energy force meaning cr creating life you know being a force of living and so when we feel that opposite force it's you know it's a thing <laughs> it's, it's even though uh, but you, you know, being able to charge the intention around it, it uh, it does everything. My friend David Gandelman, he's been on my he's been on the show a couple of times, and I don't know if he's told this story on the podcast. David Gandelman is a spiritual teacher and a meditation teacher. You guys check him out; he's amazing. He has a sleep podcast now called Grounded Sleep with David Gandelman. But I'm gonna share a story of his that he, I've heard him tell many times in um, meditation classes of his that I've attended. He was in upstate New York where his brother lives, and he and his brother were visiting. You know, he hadn't been there in a while. I think upstate New York. Maybe it was Jersey. I don't remember. Anyway, he was visiting his brother from out of state, and they were hiking. He didn't know really the area they were hiking, or he hadn't been there in a while. And he went to go, like, meditate by some trees. He told his brother, I'll, I'll meet you, you know, back in a few minutes. And while he was meditating at the trees, he just was like connecting with the trees. And he, I think he just kind of like wanted to know, you know, like put an inquiry forward about what it is that they felt or experienced. And he said, he, he felt very clearly them saying, we want to be cut down and made into houses. <laughs> and he was like, what? What? He's like, yes, we want to be cut down and made into houses. And he kept seeing like houses, like 
<laughs> very drawn and stuff. And he was like, well, that was an interesting tree meditation. All right, whatever. Then he, you know, finished his meditation, went and met with his brother. And uh, so he asked, hey, you know, that forest, like, I don't remember that being there. You know, what's that all about? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a man-made forest. It's actually, uh, they planted it to be able to cut them down and to make it into um, low-income and low-cost housing. <laughs> so it was like a, a government charitable project. And so these trees had a life purpose to be cut down <laughs> and made into homes for people who really needed them. And so it was all That's about amazing. the intention. Isn't it beautiful? It I is. Just love that story so much. Yeah. You know, the one thing that's interesting, I was told when I, when we're talking about the intentionality of spaces and what we're creating and the intentions that we're putting into that, that day that I looked in the backyard and like, it was basically just leveled down to dirt. Everything was gone. I was loudly in my ear profoundly the message came through that sometimes we have to break down everything that once existed to build it into something better and it was like a, a reflection of myself like a reflection of the journey i've been on to like break down everything that i knew or thought was possible or how i'd experienced my life up to a certain point and break that all down and start over and build it into something new and more beautiful and more impactful Mm -hmm. Wow. This is, I mean, I could talk to you for hours. This is <laughs> so, beautiful. <laughs> so, so beautiful. And what, what kind of, uh, tell folks about the kind of work and how they can connect with you, the kind of work that you're doing, the sessions that you're doing. And, um, um, right now I have my, an offering on my website, spirituallyguidedlife.com is where you can find me. Um, Right now I have what's called my soul clarity sessions. They're kind of a blend of everything because I found that in my readings and my work with other people, it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. So it just, it's a container, it's a space for whatever is most needed at that time. There's a little bit of intuitive channeling mediumship. Sometimes there's energy work involved in there. Um, but I do feel that is evolving and expanding as what that looks like we'll find out when the time is right. But yeah, right now that's the main focus of my work is those soul clarity sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my sessions are the same way too. I, you know, I see sometimes <laughs> when someone is starting their spiritual business and sometimes I'll have a few different kinds of sessions and maybe some people that actually just works for you. And I think I did too. I had like three or four or something. Cause, and then I just was like, you know what? Just show up. <laughs> we'll do what needs to be done. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes that's channeling right. is that, the most efficient. That's for, about like, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes channeling is the most efficient. I mean, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes we we just really need to. I just need to do. We need to do some hypnosis and some energy healing and stuff like that. So yeah, I know. I love that though. It's really cool, right? Because then you're just you just get to be there and and be that and just conduct whatever it is that needs to happen. I find it makes the container more expansive that way and yeah. not so confined to what you've labeled it right well the other thing i found that's really cool is because then for that for that kind of session with me then like my intuitive mediumship sessions just what i call it you know i, I work with people one-on-one -on -one sometimes long term but that's different we're working in you know there is a lot of hypnosis there's there's a lot of exercises and you know a lot of healing but when it's like that big soul kind of boom it really that's like once a year you know what i mean like if you're going to do some mediumship some ancestral healing some uh, contract review see what your who your emissaries are see what you know cosmic energies you know the, the intergalactic energies you're bringing in i don't know it's like all of the things <laughs> so that'll happen about once a year so it's kind of like a big thing that you it's a big ball of energy that you can unpack for a while and uh, whereas when you're working one-on-one -on -one for a while, you know, you're kind of getting into the minutia and that's mm -hmm. awesome, obviously, you know? So that's what I think is really cool about just making it that big container, like you say, for, for whatever, it just cram it all in. Metatron tends to really take charge of those, right? It's like, all right, come on, we got to get some work done. <laughs> I've, I've actually been working with him a lot lately. So that's I, I could feel it. <laughs> that's why I could feel it. Maybe it's yours. I think if Metatron really takes it, at least at this time, I don't know, is really like taking charge of your sessions. Like, all right, just sit down. Just, just, just do this. <laughs> That's what I love about Metatron. So direct. 
Um, well, this has been so beautiful, and I just appreciate you bringing your all that love. You, you don't have any choice, though, do you? You had to, you gotta, like, can't, as can't much as contained. I would like to say I do, I really don't. It just it just comes out. <laughs> yeah. Are you a uh, are you a projector? Do you know your human design? I'm a manifesting generator. Oh. Manifester generator. That's so cool. You're like the coolest type to me. <laughs> Because I'm like the polar opposite. I'm a reflector. And I feel like manifesting generators have like all the cool things. But, you know, I mean, there's no such thing as one being better than the other. <laughs> we all have our integral. Yes. And as Ness, and now my words are going to fail me. We all have mm -hmm. that integral role. And without each other, we wouldn't be as connected or as have those things that we can appreciate, appreciate about one another. Mm -hmm. You know, because... What I lack, I see in you. And I'm sure it's the same with many relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's what really makes things beautiful is the diversity. Mm -hmm. How about your, is your chart, do you have a lot of open centers? Do you remember? I I think my only open center, if I remember correctly, I think is in my spleen. Really? It's the only one that's white and everything else is colored in? I could be wrong, but I think the spleen is the one that's the open center. Okay. I don't know. I just, I'm fast. I'm always fascinated. Every, again, everybody, like you're saying that, that how you're saying like well, the deficient, the deficient is not the right word, but yeah, those areas where we kind of plug into one another. So I, I, I don't I think know. A lot. Part of that that comes in is because I'm also a Gemini. It's like that duality and things mm -hmm. that I, I think it's part of that Gemini nature is just to see mm -hmm. the things, you know? Yeah. Well, you are so beautiful, Amy. I really appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And we have all of your information in the description and in the show notes. And, um, oh, well, we can also see you live in the lab, in the Lightworkers Lab. Mm -hmm. There's a link in the description. And you you go up on sa Sundays, is that right? Yep, I go up every yeah. other Sunday. Sunday, where she is going live and offering her, um, you know, intuitive guidance and healing and some teaching. So catch up with Amy Crandall, A Spiritually Guided Life. And I just appreciate you and love you so much, Amy. Thanks for being on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a joy. And I just love you right back. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you found something within your own heart light up. That's definitely how I felt by connecting with Amy. And every time that I do connect with her, and actually she was just, Amy was just one of the coaches in the channeling intensive that Crystal and I ran. It was an eight-week immersive coaching program to help people open up channeling oh it was so cool and so she was one of the guides and coaches to facilitate people while they were having these practice sessions and wow it was really beautiful to be a part of of the sessions that she was running because it's it was just so divine and so supportive and beautiful I keep using the word beautiful but I don't know what else I don't have better vocabulary <laughs> for the energy <laughs> and I wanted to share with you also you guys uh, actually Amy and I you know, we opened before we started the episode, we opened with a prayer. And I actually always do that before my uh, when I'm doing a con. Well, I mean, uh, any time that I'm going to create something. But when I'm actually having a conversation, I have a guest on my podcast, which, you know, sometimes I do plenty of solo episodes. I do that. I, I open up with a prayer and invocation and opening a sacred space. And I, I, do, I just had the idea this time because Amy and I prayed together and I asked her, I said, I don't know, I feel like maybe sharing that on the podcast. So <laughs> I'm going to share that with you here in just a second. It was just really lovely. And I hope that, uh, you know, you can pray with us as well. And so with that, do check out Amy's links in this description, A Spiritually Guided Life. Man, get one of those sessions. Really, really beautiful. And I invite you also to like, subscribe, share, and comment and uh, stay, you know, if you're on YouTube, be sure to stay connected by clicking the bell because, uh, you know, 
that's the best way to get the notifications about different videos. I also post a lot on Instagram, and I'm posting on Instagram TV. So if you like that, go find me at trishacarcharm.com, as well as Crystal Ann Compton, and as well as uh, the Light Shine Academy, Light Shine Spiritual Academy. You can find all of those links in there. Those are all different places that I'm posting. And I have some really great episodes coming up. I'm going to do more of uh, channeling and meditation and meditative type offerings because I see that you guys really love that and I appreciate you for that. So before we close out, I'm going to let you guys in on the prayer that Amy and I had. So stay tuned and I'll say goodbye to you afterward. Open the space for sacred work, for the flow of love and light, welcoming Gaia, Mother Gaia, Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for knowing us by name and loving us by heart. And welcome light. Welcome central sun. Welcome guides and angels. May this space be open and connected. May we be of service to ourselves and to all who would come to it in all time and space. We open our hearts we open our throats. <sighs> Anything you want to say, Amy? That there is, we hold much gratitude for this time where we can meet together yes. and discuss yes. all things that are love and divinity. Amen. And so the space is open. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Thank you.